if you don't get used to these kind of environments and treating yourself and doing nice things for yourself and going to nice places or even if that's not your thing and you like the more chill calm relaxed vibe you're going to get really quickly attached to people that maybe do that for you but they're not doing it with good intention and you want to quickly be able to know that hey you know what this doesn't feel right for me and i'm not gonna ignore red flags just because they're taking me to a nice dinner or they're doing this nice thing for me or they're buying this nice thing for me because i've done all of that for myself and i continue to do all that for myself Solo dating, it's not just for singles. I think it's one of the best forms of self-care that you can do. Show yourself some love. And in this video, I'm gonna not only show you how to solo date, how to get over the awkwardness of solo dating. I'm also gonna give you 10 really great solo date ideas that you can do at like every level or phase that you're at. A person who's really shy and has never tried this before, I got you. If you're a person who's done this many times, I got some new ideas that maybe you didn't think of. So what is solo dating? Hold on, let me get my tea. It literally is what it says. It's you just taking yourself out on a date. And at, at first, like when people think of it, like, well, why would you do that? But there's so many amazing benefits to why you should solo date. And it doesn't matter if you are a single person or you're in a relationship or you're married, like whatever your situation is, solo dating does not revolve around your relationship status. Ugh. relationship status solo dating is for you so it doesn't matter who's in your life i just saw it as me enjoying my own company and me wanting to do things on my own i literally I'm spending time with myself i don't know what solo dating just puts like a label on it romanticizes basically you just hanging out with yourself and enjoying your own company i think the main thing that trip people up is the fact that oh my gosh i'm doing this by myself oh my gosh everybody's gonna be staring at me they're gonna be thinking I'm a loser or maybe they're gonna think why is she here by herself? Why is he just sitting over there by himself? Oh, you must be single. Oh, you must feel so lonely. I'm gonna tell you one thing I learned because I thought all of these things too. I'm turning 39 at the end of this month. Happy birthday to me. By the way, I'm celebrating all month. Today is officially July 2nd and my birthday is on July 31st. But anyways, I digress. Nobody's watching you like that. No, like nobody is watching you like that. And I had to learn this. I still am and I'm still growing through it, but I was so heavily focused on what other people thought of me, how they viewed me. I still, I'm still working on it. I'm not 100%, but I'm way better than I was. That is a thought that I had in my head. People are gonna think I'm a loser. Oh, she's single, oh, whatever. It does, no one's thinking that. You know what I've actually found out? that's probably more accurate. When I go out by myself, I get so much attention. A lot of people who are looking at you and staring at you, they're actually in awe because what you're doing is not common. Most people are not good at spending time alone. If they're going anywhere, they have to go with someone. When they're looking at you, some of them are probably thinking, wow, she's confident. <laughs> wow, they're confident. Or, hmm. That, that, that looks so peaceful. They're just sitting there having a great meal, reading a book. Sometimes when I go out, I'm literally watching a video. I'd be like laughing, not like obnoxiously, but I'm laughing out loud and I can tell like people are like, oh, she looks like she's having a good old time because I am. Know that people are not thinking about you in that way, if at all. I think that will help you a little bit to get over the shyness or the awkwardness of the situation. Stop focusing on everybody else. This solo date is about you. Focus on you. <laughs> Focus on what you like, the environment that you're in and how it makes you feel. Don't worry about all the other people. They're doing their thing and you do yours. Here is the way you're going to like actually get over this awkwardness or fear or shyness of solo dating or going out on your own. I'm gonna tell you, watch, watch. You probably have, nobody's told you this before, watch, listen. Stop focusing on getting over the awkwardness. Just do it. Do it awkward. Do it shy. Do it afraid. Do it however you're feeling but do it you don't have to get over anything just pick something that you would like to do and go and do it the key to making this more natural and just something that you enjoy that you look forward to doing it's practice the more you get out there the more you learn about yourself the more you're doing this the more time you get to spend with yourself and discover things rediscover things you're gonna fall in love with yourself more you're gonna fall in love with the hobbies that maybe just kind of fell by the wayside over time because you're always focused on work or this or that 
that or that person or whatever, you finally get to just focus on you. Stop trying to get over the awkwardness. Just do it awkward. Do it. And listen, if you struggle with self-esteem issues, self-confidence issues, just not really knowing what it is you like to do, your purpose, where your life's headed, if you're happy with where you're at, if you like your job, if you like the people that you hang out with as friends, if you like your partner, it doesn't matter. Like solo dating gives you the opportunity to focus on yourself so much so that you have time to look at all of this because when you're sitting in a restaurant by yourself having lunch you're, you're not talking to your friend back and forth for an hour and a half two hours literally for that whole entire time it's you and your thoughts it's you in the book and when thoughts come up of certain things you can analyze them and be like yeah i actually don't like doing xyz or i actually really like doing xyz why don't i do that anymore if you're struggling with self-love solo dating is great for that doing things by yourself solo travel exploration discovering yourself just rediscovering and you know what too i'm even speaking to those people out there who like being around people all the time like if you go somewhere if you're doing something you're probably doing with with someone here's the thing i'm not saying you got to solo date every time you go out i'm not even saying you have to solo date every week or even every month ask yourself this question really sit down and think about it and meditate on it if you're into that the things that you enjoy doing do you actually enjoy doing them or do you enjoy doing them because you have the entertainment of others you have alcohol you have outside influences and forces that are dictating how fun this situation is or do you just enjoy it and one of the ways you can tell if you just enjoy it is that you should be able to enjoy it with or without those things i think i'm gonna do a story time as well about the time that i did a little social experiment on myself and i gave up alcohol for two years if i didn't drink when i went to these places would i still want to go let's find out and i went cold turkey I did not drink not a drop of alcohol. It didn't matter what the event was. It didn't matter what the occasion was. And it really gave me an opportunity to see if I actually enjoyed being in these environments that I've been in for a while, but do, do I still enjoy being in those environments? Just a thought. I'm just putting it out there. I'll let you sit with that and you can, you know, think about it. All right, so let's get into these 10 solo date ideas. With these 10, I'm also gonna give you some tips. First one is brunch, but not on the weekend. It's more crowded. And if it's your first time, I wouldn't recommend it because you're gonna feel really awkward, especially if you go to a brunch place that requires you to line up. You're just gonna be sitting in this line by yourself, and then you're gonna be sitting at a table by yourself. And more often than not, you're not they're not going to be putting you in a little corner where you can like tuck away you're probably going to be like right in the middle like, i suggest you go during the week because nowadays brunch is so popular that a lot of restaurants and establishments offer the same type of brunch items on their lunch menu throughout the week so maybe you're not getting that same lunch experience maybe they don't have the bottomless mimosas on a Wednesday but if you can do it I would say do it the restaurant will be quiet it'll be peaceful not only that you'll get special attention because you don't have a whole full restaurant that all the servers have to like be running around and tending to everybody they're gonna be more attentive to you so you're gonna feel like a princess try to pick a time between like 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Get a seat by the by a window if you can it's just yeah. Okay, number two, park date. Don't do a park date as your first solo date and go on the weekend. Solo date is time for you to reflect and relax and just like be with yourself. It's always so nice to like go and feel like you have the whole park or that whole little area just for yourself. Avoid holidays, avoid weekends, find a nice tree, grab your blanket, your little snacks, your book or download a movie or something and find a nice cute little spot and just chill okay number three is a vip movie i wouldn't recommend this either as like a first time one because going to the movies by yourself is pretty daunting unless you're a little more adventurous and you're like yeah let's just do it then go for it but the reason why i say vip is because the theaters are a little smaller and the seats are so comfortable you're only sitting well here in toronto you're sitting beside 
one other person. So it's kind of interesting. If you go to a VIP movie solo, actually, now that I think about this, this could actually work maybe for you first timers. Cause think about it. Seats are two, two pair, right? If you get one and another person is going solo and they get the other one, I'm not saying you now got to date this person, talk to this person, get to know this person, but that awkwardness of feeling like everyone around you is watching you and seeing that you're here by yourself will completely fade away because you have another person sitting beside you and people might just assume that the two of you are there together. I'm just saying. The other great thing about the VIP movie is that you get to order food and they bring it right to you. They're, they're, the feeling of ordering like a flatbread pizza or wings or whatever you're into and a glass of wine and just watch your movie and chill and have your popcorn if that's what you want. So number four, here's one that is great for all um, people, whether you're a beginner or not take a class. The great thing about taking a class is even though you're going by yourself, there is more likely going to be a few people in that class. So you're not going to feel alone. And more often than not, you'll get to chatting with at least one person. And hey, you could actually make friends with someone from a class that you've been to. People are always super friendly when they're going to classes, especially if you link up with someone who's like, yeah, this is my first time going to this class too. Class examples could be like taking a pottery class, taking a cooking class. By the way, cooking classes are great, especially if the food you made, you get to sit down and eat it with the people there. Love that. You can take a candle making class. You can take a donut making class. You can take an art class. There's so many different things. Find something that you're interested in and just Google that plus the word classes in your area and you'll find a plethora of things that you can do. Number five easy one. Go for a walk or a little mini hike and grab your favorite drink at the same time. I used to do this religiously every Thursday night after work. I loved it. It was just a moment for me to decompress. I love the city at nighttime, have my favorite drink because I love a good boba and just eat. Great thing about doing this and a lot of people think, oh, that's not solo dating. It is. It's an activity that you're doing by yourself. That, that is all solo dating is. Don't get so hung up on it having to be this big elaborate thing. That's why this is good for people who are maybe students and don't have as much money, or maybe you're just on a tighter budget right now and taking yourself to the spa and for dinner and all these things just isn't in that budget. That's okay. Take a walk, grab a drink. If you live in a big city, no one's even going to notice. <laughs> it's not going to feel like you're out here doing something alone because everybody's got to walk. Everybody gets thirsty. I'm just saying. Number six. This one is recommended for the more advanced. And I'm going to tell you why. Dinner dates. Dinner dates are beautiful. They're lovely. Usually when I do a dinner date, I always try like a new restaurant, something a little bit more upscale. I splurge a little bit. And with places like that, you typically need to dress up a little bit and you know, so it can feel a little more awkward to go to a place like that because typically dinner time, you have a lot of groups of friends, you have a lot of couples sitting and having dinner. So you going there by yourself is going to feel a little bit more awkward. But if you've done solo dating before and you want to try this one because you haven't done it yet, I would highly recommend it. I don't know, something about finding a nice restaurant with food that you love or food that you're interested in trying if you're a foodie like me. It's just... It's such a beautiful experience. And if that place has live music that you can listen to, even better. But if it doesn't, bring a book. The place is a little more dimly lit. It's fine to be on your phone. You're by yourself. This is one of those times when it's not impolite to be on your phone when you're having dinner with others because you're having dinner with yourself. So if that's what you want to do, do it and enjoy yourself. Don't skimp on yourself. Buy yourself the nice appetizer. Get yourself the nice steak or whatever you're into. Ask the waiter to suggest a beautiful wine pairing to go with your steak. If the dinner date is a little daunting, start with lunch. That's a little more chiller and you can go to upscale type lunch spots as well. But the reason why I say it's such a great experience too is because when you're solo dating, you also have to remember that it does more for you than just you going out and doing things on your own. 
A lot of times we get into relationships and unfortunately we're just not treated well or we're not treated to the standard that we believe we should be treated at. We have to take accountability for ourselves obviously and do the inner work so that we know that hey I'm worth it, I deserve this and I want to find someone who sees that worth and wants to give me that or experience that with me as well. But you know who that starts with? It doesn't start with your the next person you date or the next person that could potentially be your partner. It starts with you. If you don't get used to these kind of environments and treating yourself and doing nice things for yourself and going to nice places, or even if that's not your thing and you like the more chill, calm, relaxed vibe, you're going to get really quickly attached to people that maybe do that for you in the beginning or people that come into your life and are doing that, but they're not doing it with good intentions behind their actions. And you want to quickly be able to know that, hey, you know what, this doesn't feel right for me and I'm not going to ignore red flags or yellow flags just because they're taking me to a nice dinner or they're doing this nice thing for me or they're buying this nice thing for me because I've done all of that for myself and I continue to do all that for myself. You get what I mean? Listen, that's a whole other video. So if you want that video, comment below because I've made a lot of mistakes. I've learned a lot. Previous relationships, in this relationship, I've grown a lot. So we can talk about that in another video, girl. Number seven. <laughs> so number seven is, especially if you're on a, a tight, 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 tight budget, attend a local free event. I don't know about you, but big cities have free events almost every weekend every month there some of them are themed some of them are linked to certain holidays but you can find them again just google free local events in and insert your city and you'll find them the beautiful thing about these events one you're saving money cuz they're free. There are so many cool little street festivals that happen here in Toronto all the time like Taste of Danforth, um little oh gosh, Taste of Little Italy. There's just so many I think there's salsa on St. Clair. The good thing with this too is that if you're like, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore, you can leave. This is a familiar one. Go to the spa. But here's how I'm going to put a little twist on it. It's easy to just say, okay, let's just go to the spa. Let's get some treatments, maybe facial massage, maybe get my nails done, whatever. If that's what you want to do, go for it. That's a great starting point. It's also great just to like pamper yourself and make yourself feel nice. And especially when you do it, when you literally have no special occasion coming up, there's just on a subconscious level what that does for you, you don't even know. Because so many times we feel like the only time we can do stuff like this is if we have a special event to go to, a wedding, it's someone's birthday, it's our birthday, it's such a special occasion. But when you do this and you literally have nowhere to go, love it. It's like when you get dressed up and you just go to the grocery store. It's just, it's a whole new mindset, a whole new vibe. It just puts you in a completely different place though. So. I would say do that. But here's how you can take it a step further. I love to travel and I love to see parts of my city, but also places outside of my city, but are still pretty local. And I think what's a great idea is to, even on TikTok, you can find them, lots of great spas and outdoor kind of spa experiences that are opening up outside of your city, but are only like a 45 or one hour drive away. So now you could do like a two-parter where you can do like a nice cute little road trip for the day, a little day trip. You can see a different place in the city, get your little spa on, maybe grab some lunch or some dinner, and then you can drive on back to the city and it was a whole day just about you. I'm, I said like when I do spa days, I elevate it to that level. Number nine, another easy one, go shopping. Now I'm not big on like clothes shopping, but girl, let me tell you, you tell me let's go shop for furniture, home decor, anything home related. I'm like, I'm a kid in a candy store. It doesn't have to be a big shopping spree. You can literally decide that, you know what, that thing that you've been eyeing for months and months and months and you really want it, you've saved up the money, now you have it, go shopping and do it big like make it an experience experiences are big for me so even though going and buying a thing it's just a thing that you have guess what if you create a whole experience around it even long after that thing is gone it's of no use to you anymore the vibe that you put yourself in the energy that you're in when you created this experience around it is just beautiful like really beautiful and I'm gonna show you what I mean so instead of just saying okay you know what I want that bag I've been eyeing that bag I saved up for that bag I'm I'm gonna go and get that bag. That could literally take you 15 minutes. I dress up. <laughs> I feel good, I feel nice. Sometimes, depending on the mood I'm in, I'll take a nice Uber to the mall or to the place that I'm going to. I'll buy my bag, I'll take it with me, and then I'll go one step further and like treat myself to lunch. 
and I'll just sit my little bag right on my, my chair and I just enjoy my lunch and I still just bask in that whole experience of me splurging on myself a little bit more and treating myself to something really nice. That's one way to do it. I feel like if you're gonna solo date, it's always nice when you can romanticize little things like something as simple as shopping and picking up something that you like. Go all out, romanticize it. Go after you're finished buying your bag, just stop at like a cute little outdoor patio type bar thing and just order a drink. Just have a nice fruity cocktail and just sit there and have a drink and enjoy the scenery. People watch. Build up that excitement even further for when you get home to open your new bag. <laughs> I don't know. And lastly, I love this. I'm a very creative artistic person. So going to a play, a museum, art gallery, I love that. It's a combination of seeing beautiful things, learning things at the same time. I'm gonna tell you one thing about going to a museum and an art gallery. It's not the kind of place where you necessarily have to go with people. It is very customary to see people walking around galleries and museums solo. So you definitely won't feel awkward there. Don't let anybody or any feelings stop you from doing some solo dating yourself. I need you to comment some more great solo date activities that you've tried that you love. Help the girls out that are still shy and feeling awkward about doing this and follow for more. You can watch some of these videos while you're here. Take care. <sighs>